you're the viticulture professor and guru here at UC <laughs> Davis. Um, can you just let me know from your perspective, working in the industry and, and, and researching, what are the greatest challenges that we have uh, to viticulture today in this region? Uh, probably water uh, and people and that in terms of allocation of water and, and availability of resources and labor. Uh, redesigning our vineyards so they're more effectively uh, mechanized. Disease and pest control is a huge one since we have they're not really very sustainable practices to control those problems so we're trying to be for resistance. And what are the biggest diseases that um, we're encountering today? Uh, traditionally powdery mildew and downy mildew. Of course things like phloxera and nematodes are very serious. Pierce's disease for the future of California, I think, is an important one. Although it may never spread beyond its, its typical boundaries here now, it, it, it could, and we need to be prepared for that. And um, you've been working very significantly in, in PD. Uh, how widespread is it in, in California? Uh, it's, it's fairly widespread, but it's not very broadly spread in a given area. So it's about 4 or 5% of the North Coast counties, probably. But some very, very noticeable and, and uh, famous vineyards are involved. Uh, and it does ebb and flow. It can be very serious over years and then, and then go back to sort of a dull rumble. Uh, the lower southern half of the state is, is largely affected by it. Most of the southern United States is affected by it, though, right across to Virginia. And of course the problem with PD is that it destroys the, the vine completely. Mm -hmm. One of the few diseases that kills grapes fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So is this gonna, are we going to see a huge wipeout across the country at some point stay soon? Will this be the new phylloxera? I, I don't think I call it the new phylloxera, but I think in small regional areas you'd be impressed to what the damage could be. It's uh, very devastating. It's normally about uh, 10 to 20 vines deep along the certain, certain habitat that allows the vector and the bacterial complexes to thrive. And then it moves in, doesn't really move much beyond that except for these funny times when it becomes quite serious and spreads more widely. And what is the best way to combat PD? Right now it's controlled by uh, spraying the vector, killing the vectors, and there's no other way to control it besides breeding resistant varieties. We're close to getting some for release, but uh, it'll be a few years. Up. Okay, we'll have to hold on tight for those varieties. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. They, they actually taste pretty good now. <laughs> um, and you say that people is, uh, you know, the growth in population is a, a big burden on viticulture. Mm -hmm. um, that's because of the lack of water? The lack of available water, I guess, so the allocation of water to people and urban sources and uh, the environment and then agriculture at the bottom. Uh, that water becomes more and more precious as the soils and the climate becomes drier, of course, but for two purposes, one directly and one indirectly, to leach down salts out of the, of the soil profile too. And working with more resistant um, you also said that you've been doing projects related to salinity in the soil. Mm -hmm. what, what have you found there? Well, we're looking for salt tolerance in general. We'd like to find a form that keeps it from being taken up at all, but most of the resistance comes from species that partition the salt into, into the root tissue and don't send it up into the foliage and they survive. But at some point they'll probably have too much salt in the roots to survive. But we have stuff that'll grow in t 10 to 20 percent uh, seawater right now, so it's, it doesn't grow very much, but it survives in those situations. Excellent. And then the other impact that uh, people have is the fact that we've got a lot less labor willing to work in the vineyards. Mm -hmm. uh, how soon do you think we'll see California switch completely to mechanized production methods? The whole state will probably take years, maybe 10 or more, but it's happening already. So the last couple of seasons we've had severe labor shortages in, in many of the areas. They tend not to be the highest quality areas because the highest quality areas can afford to pay more, they attract more attention and more labor. But areas like Lodi that are sort of stuck in between, it gets very difficult to manage the crews because of lack of people. And what are the differences in vineyard management and the, the shape and form of the vine when you're trying to mechanize? Mm -hmm. Now we'll need to re redesign our canopies so they're best adapted to the equipment, both the pre-pruning equipment and, and leafing equipment and harvesting equipment. Uh, and for that matter, if we go to a non-pruned or a box-pruned system, so they devise for that as well. Okay, and it, obviously a lot of your work is looking into different varieties that are resistant to this, that, and all the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, are, what are you going to say would be future variety for California? Huh. <laughs> well, I think if you look at the, the climate and how it may develop, it needs to have better acidity, better color, better productivity in some cases, uh, less water need. That'll probably come mostly through the root system, but there's also some adjustment we can do with the foliar level too. And do you think it would be Cabernet? 
No, I don't think it'll be Cabernet anymore. It'll, that'll, that'll be in some areas. We'll be able to take those characteristics, I hope, and, and adapt them into something that's more capable of sustaining itself in the environment, too. Mm -hmm. But you don't have any favorite varieties, which we might be able to see at some stage? No, there. not necessarily. Uh, remember, we have over 5,000 wine varieties, and we, we use 20 of them, more or less, so there's lots to play with. I think from a breeder's perspective, it would be nice to redesign some of those and, and have them more carefully tailored for specific conditions. So do you think this is an exciting period for breeders right now? Yeah, for breeders it's the best. You know, there's finally a demand for our talents and our <laughs> and need for our, what we've been doing all these years. Uh, whether or not we get them properly marketed and competing with the, with the international varieties is another question.